cloning used to be a big hot topic when scientists made a copy of a sheep back in 1996. Her name was Dolly. But long before we cloned sheep, technology was cloning sheets of paper. And this cloning was done with a box that rhymed with rocks. The photocopier doesn't get a lot of love. It's the unsung office machine, only drawing attention when it's out of paper, low on toner, or jam. That's why, in telling you the story of this underappreciated invention, we did something a little absurd and placed it center stage, a celebration of duplication. She is magnificent, but she sort of does the same thing over and over and over again. She tends to repeat herself. Yeah, same thing, over and over again. But I still want to meet her, can yeah, we? Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Yeah. Curator Kristen Gallerno and I had the whole house to ourselves to see the star of the Anderson Theater at the Henry Ford Museum of American Innovation. It's a 1970s era photocopier. Part of the collection at the Henry Ford, it uses technology identical to the very first copy machine, which was invented in 1959. Photocopiers from the beginning until now have depended on Blocking light, right? Yes, exactly. And you'll often see that beam of light sort of going across what your is paper. That? So, what that is, is that's actually making an exposure of your paper. And all of the black images or text on your paper, when that light goes across, what's happening is it's reflecting a shadow down onto a drum that's inside this machine. And then once you've got that black sort of image on the drum, think the, the black stuff is now static charged. The static is attracting this sort of black powder called toner. Okay. And then that gets transferred onto your paper and it gets fused with heat. That's why when you get your stack of papers out of the photocopier, they're kind of warm. This is where you would make your copies. And I can't lift it the whole way up, but you can kind of peek in there. You can see the photoreceptors and part of the drum probably and reflection of your face. So there's not a group of mice down there that are <laughs> hurriedly copying what you put down there? It's not magic inside. There's no gnomes. The first copiers, which could make seven copies per minute, were an invention 20 plus years in the making. This giant machine is the work of a gentleman named Chester Carlson. And he started work on this process in 1937. And he invented something called electrophotography. So it's really the combination, if we break that down, it's electrical work and photography work put together into one machine. Later on, he renames it xerography, which is probably a little bit more familiar to us. So this is the Xerox 914 photocopier. Before Chester Carlson completed enough iterations of his technology to arrive at the first true version of the photocopier in 1959, he made a successful copy from a much more crude version of the machine way back in 1938. A date and location that would mark time in innovation history, proof that his technology would work. What kind of a person was Chester Carlson? So he did a undergraduate degree in physics, and then he went to work at a place, a really special innovation lab called Bell Laboratories. And he came to this terrible realization. He was really clumsy, so he wasn't really cut out for lab work, but he was really interested in the ideas of innovation. So he went to work in the patent department, and that's when he first came up with this idea for electrophotography. Was um, the first photocopier made by Xerox? It was made by a company called Halloid Xerox, and actually the Xerox machine, this machine in front of us was so successful that they just shortened their name down to Xerox. It's such a landmark invention, he must have become quite wealthy off of it. He did for a time, but he was not interested in holding on to his money. He actually was very big into philanthropy, which means that he basically gave all of his money away by the time he died. Even so, Carl's invention has stood the test of time, a duplicating star whose light will never fade. Bravo, bravo. I'm just duplicating. <laughs>